optical isomerism is one type of stereo isomerism where compounds of the same molecular formula have different spatial orientation of their atoms. They are called optical isomers because of their effect on the plane of polarized light. Now what is polarized light? Light is nothing but an electromagnetic wave. The light wave may be thought of as an oscillating transverse wave perpendicular to the direction of the wave propagation. The vibration is occurring in a plane. Now if we look at the light directly from the source, the vibration seems to go up and down like this. So this two-headed arrow can represent the wave. Light wave in a single plane is called polarized light, but light from a source vibrate in many planes. Light having many vibrating planes is called unpolarized light. Now we will pass this unpolarized light through a device called polarimeter. The polarimeter contains two polaroid filters. This one is called the polarizer and this one is called the analyzer. When the light passes through the polarizer, then only one vibrating plane of the light wave is allowed to pass through it. The other vibrating planes are completely or partly absorbed. The emerging wave represents polarized light vibrating in a single plane. Polaroid filters are made up of material having their molecules arranged in order such that they allow only one vibrating plane to pass through it. If the alignment of the polaroid filter of the analyzer is same to that of the polarizer, then we can see light glow in the eyepiece. Now this polaroid filter of the analyzer is rotated to an angle of 90 degrees such that the molecular alignment of the filter material become perpendicular to the plane of polarized light. The result is that this wave is also blocked by the analyzer and we see darkness in the eyepiece. Now if polarized light is passed through optically active solution kept in this sample tube, then this plane of polarized light rotates. As a result, the darkness in the eyepiece is no longer there. We rotate the analyzer again until we see darkness in the eyepiece. This happens when the molecular alignment of the filter material of the analyzer become exactly 90 degrees with the wave emerging from the sample tube. How optical isomers arise? Optical isomers or enantiomers have molecules which have non-superimposable mirror images. They have four different groups attached to a carbon atom. These molecules are called molecules having chiral centers or simply chiral molecules. Notice that when at least two groups attached to the carbon atom are identical, then the molecule is achiral and has a plane of symmetry. Chiral molecules have no plane of symmetry. Watch this molecule which is called butan 2 all This carbon has four different groups attached to it and is chiral. Now let us make it simpler. These isomers are not superimposable, however they may be rotated. Try to bring the pink atom on the same side. Still it's not matching because the pink atom in one molecule is pointing backwards and the pink atom in the other molecule is pointing towards the viewer. Now try to bring the pink atom in a position such that it points towards the viewer. But still it's not matching. Now the green and yellow atoms are on the opposite sides. Now there are three conventions for designating optical isomers. Number one, plus minus convention. Plus isomers rotate the plane of polarized light clockwise and is called dextrorotatory whereas minus isomers rotate the plane of polarized light 
counterclockwise and is called lever rotatory. Number two, the DL convention. It is used for designating sugars, amino acids, and similar compounds. In DL convention, the reference molecule is plus glyceraldehyde, which was called a D-glyceraldehyde. This does not, however, by any way mean that all D isomers of every molecule are dextrorotatory. In fact, many D isomers have been found liver rotatory, and this compound is D minus fructose. The simplest way to understand and designate optical isomers with D and L convention is to follow some simple steps. Draw the Fischer projection. Focus on the penultimate carbon atom and see whether the substituent on that carbon is on the right or left. If the substituent is on the left, then it is L isomer, otherwise it is a D isomer. I will explain you how to draw Fischer projection of simple sugars from their ball and stick model. This is D-glyceraldehyde and this is D-erythrose. See the carbon atoms are arranged in zigzag pattern. The models are arranged spatially in such a manner that the carbon molecules can be viewed vertically. Remember that the carbon of the CHO group should be at the top because it is the first carbon as per UPAC rules. These are the groups that will be horizontal groups in the Fischer projection. The problem is which group will get what position. The rule says the horizontal group sh should point towards the viewer. These bonds are indeed pointing towards the viewer, so these groups get the same position in the Fischer projection. Now these groups are pointing backwards. This will not serve the purpose. So it is rotated such that groups point towards the viewer. This position is taken for the Fischer projection. Finally, rub the C atoms and we finally get the Fischer projection. Number three, RS convention. For chemists, the RS convention is the most important nomenclature system recommended by UPEC for denoting enantiomers or better if we say chiral centers. This does not involve a reference molecule such as glyceraldehyde. It labels each chiral center R or S according to a system by which its substituents are assigned a priority according to the CIP priority rules based on atomic number. If this molecule is oriented so that the lowest priority of the four is pointed away from the viewer, the viewer will then see two possibilities. If the priority of the remaining three substituents decreases in clockwise direction, it is labeled R. If it decreases in counterclockwise direction, it is S. Just like the DL convention, this convention also has no fixed relation with plus minus convention. Let's see the two enantiomers of glyceraldehyde. The plus isomer has been found to rotate the plane of polarized light clockwise. So this is plus glyceraldehyde and this one is minus glyceraldehyde because it rotates the plane of polarized light counterclockwise. See the Fischer projection. Focus on the penultimate carbon. The hydroxyl group over here is on the right, so it is D-glyceraldehyde, and the hydroxyl group is on the left over here, so it is L-glyceraldehyde. Now I take the hydrogen atom attached to the chiral carbon at the back, like this. The other three groups have priority in this order as per CIP priority rules. Priority of the group decreases clockwise in this case, so this is R glyceraldehyde, and here the priority decrease counterclockwise, so it is S glyceraldehyde. Now molecules having more than one chiral centers may have stereoisomers which are not mirror images of each other. They are called diastereomers. For this aldose, which has two chiral centers, these two pairs of stereoisomers are enantiomers and are mirror images which are not superimposable. And these four pairs are not mirror images and are diastereomers.
this is the ball and stick model of the stereoisomers and each chiral carbon can be designated RNS like this. Take this compound which is called tartaric acid. It comes in four forms. This is L plus tartaric acid. This is D minus tartaric acid. They both are optically active. This contained 50% of D and 50% of L tartaric acid mixed together. This become optically inactive because the rotation of plane of polarized light by one enantiomer is neutralized by the other such that the total rotation becomes zero. This is called racemic acid or DL tartaric acid. This form is called mesotartaric acid. It has two chiral centers but still it is optically inactive because of the presence of this plane of symmetry within the molecule. It may be said that rotation due to one chiral center has been neutralized by the other chiral center within the molecule. 